Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1974 Italian giallo film, The Perfume of the Lady in Black. And yes, I love my giallo. I've been continuing to do these giallo reviews. And if you are also into giallo, first of all, stick with me for this review. Although if you haven't seen the film, stop because spoilers ahead. But I have an entire playlist on my channel for giallo films. A uh, bunch of reviews. I'm, I'm in the 30s at this point and I'm gonna continue to go. So anyway, <clears throat> 1974 is The Perfume of the Lady in Black, directed by Francesco Barilli. This is my first Francesco Barilli film. Uh, he also did films such as Hotel Fear and Especially on Sunday. Written by Barilli as well as Massimo Diabac, who also wrote scripts for Dark Purpose, The Labyrinth of Sex, So Sweet, So Perverse, which I have seen and I have a review for on my channel, and Who Saw Her Die, which I'm going to be seeing because I've heard good things, and Sacrifice. Those are just a few that I named. Now, Mimsy Farmer plays Sylvia in this. Obviously, she's the main character. She's I, I feel like you barely see anyone else for all that much time because Mimsy Farmer's character of Sylvia is focused on so much because in so many ways, this film is all about her. And it's not just all about her. Uh, I mean, I, I theorize, and I might be wrong, so I want to hear other people's theories too, that basically every character in the film is actually someone kind of from her past or someone who is kind of made up to a degree, and they're all living inside of her, basically. I think this whole thing is kind of like, I don't know if anyone saw the film, uh, obviously it's much after this one, but the film Identity with John Cusack, but that type of ordeal where it's kind of like parts of her psyche, her multiple personalities in essence, fighting for control of her, but it ends up actually killing her in the end. She ends up killing herself because it's this struggle. And I think that the whole film is this struggle of her with herself. So very interesting. Now, Mimsy Farmer, I think she did a great job in this, first of all. Especially, like, her facial expressions when she acts, outstanding. You know, if you watch this film again, and I do think it bears watching more than once. I've only watched it once at this point. Uh, I do plan to watch it again at some point because I think on a second viewing, you're going to see a lot more of these kind of metaphorical things playing out. A lot of these parallels of this means this, this means this, uh, and... You're just going to catch a lot more, That that's for sure. But Mimsy Farmer plays Sylvia, um, I already said that, but she's also been in these films. Four Flies on Grey Velvet, which I have not seen, that's a Argento film. Autopsy, which I've heard good things about. The Black Cat and Body Count, those are just a few other Giallo-esque films. Also, she went on to do sculpting. Apparently, she's very good at sculpting. And she's done sculpting for a bunch of Hollywood films, such as Tim Burton's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, the newer Wrath of the Titans film that they did, the live-action Beauty and the Beast, and Guardians of the Galaxy. So she did sculpting for all of those. Very, very cool, in my opinion. Now, uh, apparently Barilli spoke to many psychologists when he was doing research for the premise of this film, and he also had said that this film was very heavily inspired by Rosemary's Baby. Now, if you know that, you can definitely see that in how the film is made and the feel of it and the material, but also I think that um, Mimsy Farmer looks a bit like, um, oh, why am I blanking on her name? That's the worst. Uh... A Mia Farrow. Oh my gosh. Mia Farrow. Yes. She looks a lot like Mia Farrow. So, just saying. The opening music for the film sounds very old school Italian, and it's odd with the photograph looking still of the family. I, I think it's interesting because it's kind of like, it looks like you're physically there with the background, but it's like the cutout picture that's like pasted on top of it. So, it's this weird kind of look. And the music that's playing with it isn't the typical giallo type music you're used to, which is like more upbeat and funky and, and new agey for the time in the 70s, but it's more of like a classic Italian type sound, which, I mean, it sounds beautiful. I think they did a good job with the score for it, so I'm not complaining. I just do enjoy the more funky, fun uh, soundtrack of certain giallo films. Just saying. Uh, the first camera movement from the fountain to the balcony is really awesome. I love that. It's showing the kid with the little boat in the, in the fountain and then kind of like 
panning up and then actually like moving up to the balcony of the apartment and then kind of over to other people there. So I thought that just looked beautiful. In general, there's a lot of really cool camera movement in this film and it moves a decent amount of the time. And it's not just like, you know, moving with characters, but kind of like, you know, doing some pivoting around characters, even when they're not, you know, moving forward. And it just looks good. It looks good. So directing really good. Cinematography really good. The acting's really good. Well, mainly Mimsy Farmer, because she's the main one who matters in this film, obviously. But they quickly hit Sylvia's home, work, and past to... Um, really, really, really quick. They kind of established those things, like what's going on in her life, you know. Uh, this is where she lives, and this is how she relaxes. This is where she works, and this is what she does for a job. And then this is what's kind of bothering her from her past. Now, obviously, what's bothering her from her past is this her mother's suicide. And I think that that really ties into the title of the film, The Perfume of the Woman in Black, being how a perfume can kind of remind people of someone. I think it's that aspect of it. Like you walk into a room and you smell a perfume and there's no one there. And if you've smelled that perfume before, it reminds you of that person. So I think it's that thing where Sylvia is constantly reminded of her mother, reminded of the suicide of her mother. So all these places that she goes to, there are things that kind of jog her memory, like that vase being one of the big things that kind of jogs that memory of when she saw her mother having sex with that guy uh, or being raped. I don't I don't know what was really going on there. I think it was consensual. I'm not sure because he then rapes Sylvia later, but just saying. So, um, yeah, so I think it's that kind of aspect of like the memory of someone based off that smell of the perfume. But I also, also think it's from in the sense of also being tied into the trauma that she experienced from her mother's suicide and not being able to get uh, around that or over that because it's like a lingering perfume that when she goes to certain places she smells that perfume and the trauma comes back to her in that way so that's my kind of take on it um, the greenhouse with the foundations and the bar is amazing in this that place where she they're first talking about black magic and voodoo and stuff like that which by the way I think you should really notice how engrossed and this is goes back to that facial acting situation with Mimsy Farmer again how engrossed Sylvia is in the story of black magic and voodoo and all those things that are being talked about when they're in this kind of like cool greenhouse bar area which I just want to be there it, it looks so cool but I think that that moment is supposed to be kind of one of the catalysts for all of her kind of hallucinations that end up going on throughout the film that's supposed to be the start of it uh, do, 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 do. Roberto, his room having all the taxidermied birds and mounted insects is supposed to give an idea of someone close to a killing ability. I think this kind of rolls in with the whole feel of Giallo where you got to have these red herrings and have people think, oh no, who's the killer? Although you don't actually end up with any bodies for quite some time, uh, you do get the sense that it, maybe they were going to try and go down the road of figuring out who had killed her mother. Maybe it wasn't suicide. But then you find out that, you know, in the end, it's her or Sylvia that's a killer. But I would argue, like I said earlier, that she's not actually killing anyone, that she's just killing parts of herself. It's multiple personalities, and this whole film actually takes place basically within Sylvia. And it's all the characters kind of fighting for control of her. And I would reference back to the part where the young Sylvia, the little girl she keeps seeing, which is a young version of her keeps making certain comments about, like, it's just Sylvia, Sylvia's the good one, like, making those types of statements. That points heavily to the multiple personality situation. Also, there are a bunch of scenes where they use mirrors and mirrors that use multiple reflections. Probably the strongest one, well, the one when they go see the psychic, but the strongest one, I think, is when uh, Sylvia's sitting down and she actually has gotten to the point where she's putting the black dress with the white po polka dots on and it's three mirrors and there are three reflections of her. I think that was intentional for that reason to kind of show, be a metaphor for the multiple personalities that are going on in her body. And it's at that point, by the way, that I need to mention since I just brought it up, that she has basically turned into her mother. She basically, basically is being inhabited by a character who is her mother at that point 
once she puts that black dress on with the white spots because that's how her mother is re is remembered and her mother is the lady in black so i just found that interesting and i think that also is supposed to foreshadow the fact that she will also commit suicide because that was the fate that her mother had and that was how you identify hers with that dress um, it kind of looks like Robert doesn't know how to have sex. This was kind of a funny moment. The sex scene with, uh, Sylvia and Roberto, <laughs> he was like, it, it looked like he didn't know how to have sex. It reminded me of the sex scene with Tommy Wiseau in the movie, The Room, if you know that film. If you don't watch it, it's terrible, but like fun, terrible. He was like moving his, his hips from side to side for the most part and not like thrusting. I mean, it was just awkward. Like that's some of the worst I mean, it's one of the worst sex scenes I've ever seen, honestly. It really is. Uh, Andy is real creepy. Uh, the guy who initially starts talking about the black magic, the guy that they go and play tennis with, and then when she gets pricked in the hand with that nail that was in the handle of the uh, tennis racket, he, like, takes her hand and is, like, sucking on it. It's so weird. Um, I took that as being, like, a temptation moment, but at the time that it was happening... I was kind of thinking, oh, you know, maybe he's trying to get close to her because they're trying to drug her and make her have these hallucinations. Like, I thought this was going to tie into, like, a bigger plot about killing her or something like that. I don't know. But in the end, I don't think that's what it is. They beat you over the head with the idea that Sylvia's stuck in her own head a lot of the time. Because there are so many of those hallucinations. There's so many of those kind of, like, flashback memories that come to life for her. They do it a lot. And I think for that reason, it kind of bogs down the pacing of the film. Um, you don't need as much as you get, but that said, if you rewatch it, maybe it plays better because you really know what's going on at that point. So you can kind of see a little bit more in it. I'll have to go back and really suss that one out. How about those scenes of Sylvia remembering the guy boning her mom? I already kind of talked about that scene, but uh, super creepy the way he just keeps looking up at her. That that makes you aware of the fact that it's not just her memory, it's her kind of reliving the memory, but also having some kind of involvement in it in that moment that she's remembering it because the character has basically come to life. And you see that later on when it's that same guy who's working at the taxidermy place who then goes and rapes her when she's in that dilapidated house, which the dilapidated house looked really cool. Um, so yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. And the guy who ended up watching Sylvia at the framers at, ends up showing up as a custodian at the zoo. I thought that was going to turn into something bigger, but I think that was kind of another one of those uh, just red herring type things. Although it is possible that he's the one who ended up picking up her framed picture. Because if you remember, she ends up going back for it and it's just not there. He's just like, oh, I didn't have it. Which, you know, terrible shopkeeper, honestly. <laughs> because of all the things Sylvia is seeing, it definitely makes her slowly unravel. And you end up feeling that. Now, I think you, you end up feeling it because of how the script is done and the directing and the music. But you end up feeling it... Mostly, I think, because of Mimsy Farmer's performance. I think she did such a good job. And by the way, don't you think that Millie Bobby Brown kind of looks a bit like Mimsy Farmer? Uh, at least Mimsy Farmer in this film. Cool shot of the psychic's face and Sylvia's in the mirror behind her. Once again, going back to that whole mirror of the multiple personality situation. That was just a cool scene in general. The part where Sy Sylvia tells the little girl to go away shows she believes she's losing it. Because the girl is her. It is definitely her. So at first she's kind of reluctant to uh, go with these hallucinations. But as the film goes on, she just starts to kind of go with it and accept the premise. And I feel like that ends up being the part where she's opening herself up to these multiple personalities. Opening herself up to being taken over basically her personality and body by another one of these personalities that are basically inside of her. And I think that they're all driven by kind of traumatic things within her life, which could also be seen as not just being like personality related, but just the role that trauma plays in a person's existence going forward after that traumatic moment and how it can play such a role in ruining your life or shaping your life. So 
Nice reveal when Rossetti feeds the bloody meat with a finger in it to his cats. I don't really know in the end what that was all about. I think it was supposed to insinuate that the friend Francesca had been killed by Rossetti, but based on what I'm saying, I think Rossetti was actually um, Sylvia. So, yeah. And then Sylvia kills Rossetti, who I think was just in her brain, if you can follow this. Just saying, am I making sense? Oh, another thing to say about the character of Rossetti. Notice that he had, like, a crazy amount of hippos in his place. And I don't understand the whole hippo thing. It's kind of weird. Just saying. The shot of Rossetti dead when he eventually gets gets killed by Sylvia. Love the way that shot looks. It's the shot where, like, it's, it's from the other side of his desk where he's working on that big, like, repainting that big hippo piece. And his head's, like, down... And, like, the way it's shot, like, you can see his head underneath, like, the the chin of the hippo. And then to the side is Sylvia. And just the way that shot is framed and pulled off looks really cool. I hope you agree with me on that one. It's awesome. Uh, do, do, do. There are a few times mirrors... Are, oh, I already talked about the mirrors. The discordant music that they end up using in this when things are going badly or becoming you know, crazy, pretty disturbing music. I, th I thought it was very impactful for that reason, and it's supposed to give you that feeling of just kind of like feeling off, feeling a little bit on edge, disturbing. It worked. It worked great. And what a crazy ending. Uh, it, it's it's a hugely crazy ending that I'm sure a lot of people don't seeing. It's don't end up seeing coming. It's kind of one of those left fieldish things. It reminds me a bit of the same type of ending of Short Night of Glass Dolls, another Giallo film. If you haven't seen it, you should definitely see it. And I have a review on my film, or on my film, on my channel for it. Um, yeah. So Sylvia's personality was fractured because of the trauma of her mother's suicide. And then that led to her own suicide, which you could tell she was headed to when she put the black, black dress on with the white dots. That was kind of the, the thing I got initially after the very, very end. In the end, all the people who were parts of her that ate away at her over time. That's what I think was kind of that very end scene where she's underground and everyone's coming together around her in a group and they're tearing, her, tearing out her innards and eating them. I think that's supposed to be two things. I think it's supposed to be the showing of all of the multiple personalities tearing her apart and ultimately doing her in. But I think it's also supposed to show the issues, the memories, the traumas throughout her life all converging on her as a person and literally tearing her apart, tearing her in and insides out until she can't live anymore. So I think it's a lot about the dealing with trauma and how it can destroy you and end your life, basically, because it does in this. This is a typical unreliable narrator situation in this film. What's real and what's in Sylvia's head seems to be the constant question here. And I love those types of films because it really keeps you guessing. And for the longest time, I didn't know how I felt about this film while I was watching it because you're not 100% sure what's really happening. So I really had to wait until everything played out at the end. And I took, I don't know, like 10, 15 minutes to really just sit down and just think through everything. I love those types of films. Like, they just make you keep thinking. And I was thinking about it the next day, too. So, I I like it. I like it quite a bit. Uh, like with a lot of Giallo films, architecture is used to make scenes look even better. I mean, that's just a thing from the 70s. Uh, Giallo films, architecture looks amazing. If you're going to see buildings inside or out with these types of films, it's going to look cool. And it does. Uh, and yeah, that's basically uh, all I had to say about it. But I would be very interested to hear what everyone else's theories on the meaning behind this film are or what the events actually were because, you know, that's just my theory. What I'm putting out there, it's my take on what I saw. And like I said, I saw it once. So let's talk about it. Go ahead in the comments, your theories, let's talk. Um, so out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a pretty solid three and a half star rating. I kind of wanted to go up to four, but the problem is it's not paced very well. It does seem to really drag, but I like the overall story of it. I think it's pretty ambitious and interesting, and there are a lot of good things about it. So three and a half stars, thought about four, but no, going three and a half. But 
Thanks everyone for checking this out. Like I said, put some comments down there. Do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button because that is your best way to repay me. If you like this video or any video I've ever done, simply pay me back with that subscription. I appreciate that. Also hit the notification bell button because that way you'll know when I'm putting up more review videos like this or any unboxings or haul videos or opinion pieces or whatever. But regardless, like I said, I appreciate you taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal. Oh, did I show? I don't think I even showed this. I just got so wrapped up. But uh, this is the film I watched it from. It's from Raro Video. It's their um, Blu-ray version of the film. It's cool. I dig it. But anyway, now I'm going to end this. Thanks for checking it out. Until next time, keep it brutal.